Welcome back to RC Extra. It's been a little while since I've posted videos. I apologize. You know, between the holidays and me getting sick, I just haven't been able to get any out. But I wanted to do this video. I'm going to go into a high level explanation of if a person wanted to get into 3D printing. And it's not going to be a how-to video, it's just going to show enough detail where somebody can decide if they want to go down the path of 3D printing or not. And since this is kind of outside of my normal um, area of uh, RC, just wanted to quickly introduce myself in case I get people outside of the RC community. And I mean, my background is I've been racing and into RC cars for a long time, and I'm an RC enthusiast and very much new to 3D printing. And so I'm not claiming to be an expert. Really, this video is just going to go over my experience getting into 3D printing and sharing what it takes. So a quick summary, I'm going to go over the printer that I selected and some of the pros and cons of why I picked the printer that I did. I'm going to review the software that you need to download in order to go from designing a part all the way to printing a part. And then I'm just going to high level run through that process as well of what you would need to do from design to print. And you can find in the description of this video links to all of the software I'm using, which it's all free software, um, and also links to any websites I refer to. So check the video description afterwards for those links. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. The first thing to cover here is my printer. And I'm going to show you guys what this thing looks like and we can talk about it. So there are a ton, I mean a ton, of 3D printers to choose from. And they range anywhere from $100 to thousands of dollars. Um, really can be quite overwhelming figuring out which printer to buy. And so, um, you know, just to go over my thought process, the first thing I did was ask some of my buddies that I know are really into 3D printing. Um, and pretty much um, most of them came up with similar answers. Um, pretty much everybody mentioned um, the Perusa line of printers and also the Creality line of printers. And so I ended up getting a Creality. It's um, about, the one I purchased is about half the price of the Perusa. Um, and really the, within Creality's printer lines, they have quite a few printers to choose from. Um, the one that I got is an Ender 3 S1 Pro and um, you know, each, the higher up the Ender number line, because there's an Ender 3 and an Ender 5, um, and mostly the, it's just they're, the 5 is bigger than the 3. And then there's a bunch of different 3s within the line, and the S1 Pro is the um, highest end printer within the Ender 3 line. And some of the pros that the Ender 3 has is it has auto bed leveling, which, um, you know, it helps you to get started. Bed leveling can be kind of challenging and it helps in that department. Um, it also has a direct drive extruder, which is this part right here. Um, a lot of printers actually will have a feeder up here that pushes the filament into the hot end. And in this case, the feeder and hot end are all in one piece, so they call that a direct drive. Um, and the whole uh, direct drive and hot end of this printer, it allows for higher temperatures. 
which means you can do more materials. And um, so that was, I would say the main pros. Um, additionally, actually one other pro to mention is minimal assembly on this printer. Um, and I'll get into that assembly in a bit here, but minimal assembly. The biggest cons of this printer, and I'm unfortunately experiencing some of this pain myself right now, the manufacturer is in China. And if you have issues with this printer, um, especially when they're under warranty, you have to contact a person in China, which is difficult because of the time zone. Also difficult because of the language barrier. And if you're going to want to call somebody, that's a expensive long distance phone call. Um, you know, there's no, um, 1-800 number to call. Um, and so, it, you know, it, I ended up using email just to avoid the communication issue. Um, I used email and videos to talk to them and it's been a tedious process. Um, in addition, if you do need to order parts direct from the manufacturer, you're also going to be getting those from China. So that, that can also take a long time to get those parts. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind if you choose a Creality printer. Um, overall though, when the printer was working, it was working really good. I was really happy with the results and I'm excited to get it working again. Um, hopefully that will be soon. Um, so yeah, if, if we zoom in on this just a little bit for you guys, um, again, this is the extruder um, which feeds the, this plastic material that they call filament into it. And it melts it out the tip and it lays it down here on this bed. Um, this bed is heated. The tip is heated to melt the filament. Um, this here is the gantry. Um, it goes up and down to control the Z-axis. Um, and then this bed moves around in the Y direction and um, this head moves in the X direction. Um, so that's pretty much how you control the actual printing. Um, and then over right here is the screen. And I this printer is not turned on right now, but that's a touch screen. And you can use that to control the basics of the printer. Um, assembly on this thing, it came... This bottom bed was all one piece, and then this gantry was a piece, this light bar was a piece, um, this uh, spool was a piece, and the screen assembly. So you just had to assemble all of that. Um, it was actually pretty quick. It was like, I think 11 to 13-ish screws. Um, the hardest thing was really just kind of sorting through the directions in the video, um, which I would recommend ideally. I'd probably go to YouTube and use a YouTube video. Um, but the assembly was pretty easy. Um, the only other part I would say of assembly is you really, you need to pre-check the pre-assembled parts. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure this bed is solid it doesn't wobble and make sure these pieces up here are solid and they don't wobble and if they are there's um, some various adjustments you can make to take the wobble out and then these little knobs here and here are belt tensioners and just make sure these belts have enough tension so when it's moving around it's not skipping on the teeth um, but yeah, that's, I would say, the high-level setup of this thing. So once you do get the printer fully assembled and you're ready to turn the printer on, um, really the first step from there is you do have to do some bed leveling, and it's not... Let, you know, it's not pulling out a bubble level 
and make sure it's make sure it's level in that direction. It's making sure this nozzle as it moves around on a plane is level to this surface here. And so to do that on this printer, it has these wheels here that you can adjust the corners and you have to adjust these wheels and you use a piece of paper and you to measure the gap between the bed and the nozzle. And so I'm not going to go into the full details of how you level a bed, but it takes, I would say somewhere around a half an hour to 45 minutes of iteration to really get a solid bed leveled. And um, just the important thing here is that you do it at least in the final stages of doing it. You want to do it with the bed heated up and the nozzle heated up because you get thermal expansion. If you level it when it's cold, I actually, unfortunately, on a tired and frustrated evening, did that and um, had everything I thought leveled and then I went to print and my hot end, actually you could see the gouges in my bed right here, but it gouged my bed because of that thermal expansion. So just make sure that you do the final steps of leveling with the bed fully heated and the hot end heated. And, you know, select, like I do 200 on the hot end and 60 on the bed, which is roughly recommended settings for PLA, but whatever material you're going to print, you should start around those temperatures and level the bed. Um, and then the final thing is, is you can, when you start a print, you want to check the first layer. Um, and um, the first layer, you want it to be a certain smoothness and thickness and you can adjust the Z offset of your bed to correct that. And again, I'm not gonna go into the details, but these are the high level things you need to do after assembly. So next I'm gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about all the software packages, what you need and how those work and how to finally get a file to plug into your printer and print. All right, so you have your printer all set up and now you are ready and you want to print something and you really, you have three options to do this. Um, the first is typically your printer, it will come with some sort of medium. Mine came with an SD card and on the SD card, there were four files already ready to go. So you can load that SD card into the printer and print any one of those four files right off the start. The next, so once you get bored with what came with the printer, you have two other options. One, there's many uh, like STL database type websites on the internet. This one I have on my screen now is called Thingiverse. And you can go to thingiverse.com and for example, I'm gonna put in Team Associated B6 to stick with the RC theme. And a bunch of files will show up for that search. And then if like, for example, if you click on this spur gear cover, it'll bring you here. And then you can click over here, download all files. This will give you the option give a tip to the designer if you want to, but you don't have to. And then this zip file pulls up like so. And here's a zip file. And within it, you can go to files and you'll see right here is an STL file. Windows is saying it's called standard tessellation language. Maybe that's instead of stereolithography, it, maybe that's what it means. Um, either way, it's a, it's a type of format that's standard across 
all different CAD programs. And so once you have an STL file, then you can convert it into G code. Um, I will get into that in a minute. I want to show you the other option, which is you can go into Fusion 360. And um, here I already did something really quick. But you can essentially what Fusion 360 is what you do is you create a sketch. So a sketch right here, it's just a rectangle. And once you create the rectangle, then you can extrude it. So if we finish that, actually, let's just do this. Okay, so we've created that rectangular sketch, then we extrude it. So you can see right here now it's a solid block. And then finally we put a hole in it. So pretty basic stuff here, but you can do very complex stuff with Fusion 360. Um, and this program's free for personal and hobby use. Um, can read the details on what that means on their site and see this video details for a link to do that. But once you have a file here that you created, you can go over here to file and 3D print. <clears throat> and this allows you to save it as an STL file. So you can click on this, say, okay. And then you can save this, whatever name, and it'll be .stl. Um, so let's do like test.stl. And then from here, we've either downloaded an STL or we just created one. And so then we would go into what's called Kira. And here's a, if we do a new project, yes. So this essentially, this square pattern down here, it represents the size of my bed. You can see here, I have the Creality Ender 3S1. Um, so when you first install this, it'll ask you what printer you have. And it's set up for these Ultimaker printers. If you don't have one of their printers, you would just select Custom. And then there's a whole list of manufacturers so you could pick for mine you'd pick Creality and then they would list all the printers and they didn't have an S1 Pro so I just picked the S1 um, but it gives it defines your surface of your bed down here and then it puts in standard settings for the printer to give you some decent results and so um, once you have your printer all selected, then you can go over here to File, Open Files, and you can pick an STL. If mine already goes to my default location, but if not, you can pick like Documents here and then STLs. Um, and so I'll just pick my Pinion Caddy that I created, but you can see the test one is right here as well. Actually, we'll pick the test one. So there you go. It's in there. If you click on this object, you can use any of these to move it around, scale it in size, rotate it. So you could like rotate it to print on the end. Um, but typically, you know, you'd want to do the the larger surface down on their bed, but you can mess with orientation for different properties. That allows you to rotate it. You could mirror it, etc. Over here, these are your basic slicer settings. And so you can toggle, actually it's gonna show up like this for you from the start. So you can toggle the resolution you can do low quality if you just want to do a quick test print. Um, and then you can 
improve the quality once you've confirmed dimensions and whatnot work. Um, the infill here is, you know, this wouldn't be a solid part. The interior of it would be hollow. And this infill percentage would determine how much of it's hollow. So like 20%, it's going to put like a, a mesh pattern. I'll show it to you in a minute. And if you go to full 100, then it would be solid. Support you use if you have overhangs. So you can, it'll build this fake support that breaks away to support an overhang. Adhesion here is used for it to stick to the bed and you can build um, like a skirt around this to really help it stick. Um, and then if you hit custom, it goes into a bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to go into the details of it um, other than under material, you can adjust the print temperature of the, the um, print head and the build plate temperature. And these are important as you start changing materials. You'll want to change this. And I discovered the hard way. The printer allows you to adjust these settings. But whatever you put in Kira will override that. So um, these are important to know they're here. And then there's like some speed settings you can do, um, cooling. Some, some materials don't like the fan on them. You can turn that off, etc. Um, but for your first print, I wouldn't mess with any of those settings. I'd pick a basic print, maybe even one from the manufacturer. But um, once you have it in here, you can click slice here. And basically is what it does is it builds a bunch of overlapping slices of this part. And um, it tells the printer where to go to do each one of these slices. And so you can see what that looks like. And so right here, you can see this would take three hours and 14 minutes to print this. Cause I mean, this is a pretty big part, which is why. Um, but if you hit preview, then you get a bar down here at the bottom and a bar on the side. This bar shows you how the printer fills in that slice. And you can see over here, there's a 50. So there's 50 slices, so to speak. And you, you can see what I meant here about it not being solid. It kind of does this lattice structure in the middle. Um, and you can, again, see how it fills that in. And yeah, you can just go down through the layers and see how it's going to print your part. And then once you're good with your settings on your slicer, then you'll plug in your SD card reader. Um, my printer came with a USB reader, so you can plug that in to your computer. Um, and then this save to disk, it'll change to a save to removable drive. And you click that and it saves it to your SD card. And then you'll eject that SD card and you'll stick it in your printer. Turn your printer on, heat up, preheat the bed and the nozzle, and then it, you can hit print and it will print this object. Um, it's really important that you watch the first layer to go down just to make sure that you get good adhesion on the bed. And then, um, you know, after that, I would just check it ever so often. Um, anyway, I eventually I'll show you guys some more printing. Unfortunately, as I mentioned or alluded to earlier, my printer is not functioning right now, so we're going to skip doing that. But I hope this kind of helps you with what it would take to get started, um, basic programs and what you need to learn. And um, if you do, you know, like this video, please like and sub subscribe.